Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be very exciting. I've been wanting to do this video for a really long time. I just had to really sit down and take my time with this one. I get complimented all the time on my skin when I'm wearing makeup. People always ask me how you get your blush to blend in so well, your bronzer, everything. So I decided to share those tips. I don't want to say secrets with you guys because they really aren't secrets. If you watch my videos, if you watch my tutorials or my get ready with me, I do these steps, but I guess because it's more mostly fast forward, I don't really focus my video on that per se. Say. It might be a little hard to catch, but today I wanted to really focus on showing you guys how I achieve a flawless, very natural looking skin foundation base with the blush, the bronzer, and the highlight. Really wanted to focus on the skin. I wanted to do something that was mostly affordable products, but they are not all affordable. The reason being is because I really wanted to show you guys the products that I use and the products that I trust, and not all of them, fortunately, are drugstore. But I'm showing them to you guys because I'm telling you, like, these products are definitely worth the investment. And if if you're gonna invest in anything throughout this video invest in these things but I really hope you guys enjoy this video I really hope it was helpful that was my entire goal to make this a really simple easy to follow video for anybody especially if you guys are just starting out with makeup you guys are gonna see I go very in-depth and in how I do everything so if this video is a little longer I apologize but obviously for those of you guys who have been playing with makeup for a while who just can't seem to not get your bronzer to skip or your contour powder to skip or your blush to lay right or your highlight to lay right this will answer those questions as well so if you guys have any more questions comments concerns please leave them in the comment section down below and i will get back to you as soon as possible but other than that please enjoy this video and let's get right into it all right guys the first thing you have to do which gets so overlooked is you have to start off with a clean face a clean nice base you cannot put makeup on dirty or oily skin and think it's gonna stick because it's not it will not stick and it will not lay right so start off with clean skin now we got to go on to moisturizing to moisturize i'm going to use my old hendrix and counterbalance oil control hydrator this is a beautiful skin cream for somebody like me who does have oily skin this hydrates yet really prepares your skin for makeup is it expensive? Yes, but it works. And then on top of that, I'm going to use my Nivea Men's Post Shave Balm, something that is very affordable. And I like this because it also helps hydrate your skin, but it also does give it a nice tacky layer. Not too tacky, but it is something that makeup will adhere nicely to. And after we're done with all that, we're going to go in with an actual primer. This one's from CoverGirl. This is the CoverGirl Vitalist Go Glow Luminizing Lotion. This is a primer that is infused with vitamin E, B3, and B5. And what this does is, I mean, you're going to see on screen, it just gives your skin a really nice natural glow. I am using the shade Daybreak, but they have plenty of shades for so many skin tones, and this stuff works amazingly. And then to set all that in place and do a step that I really believe in, I'm going to go ahead and kind of set my primers and really adhese everything and melt it into the skin. You guys see me do this all the time and I know it's a bit counterintuitive to um, prime with a setting spray, but it works, guys. It works. Now we're going to go on to foundation. One thing I do have to mention is take a pause. And what I mean by that is after all those primers, let your skin settle, let it become a little bit tacky, and then go into foundation. Don't go into foundation right after you prime. Let your primer settle. Now we're going to go into foundation. And I always like to use a damn sponge. Always, always, always. And the reason why is because I find that the sponge melts the foundation into your skin. There's nothing that's going to give you the finish of a damp sponge. Nothing. There's just no brush that's going to give you the finish, the glow, the everything that a damp sponge will give you. Also, it does half the work for you. I'm doing this in real time. You guys are seeing me do this at the speed that I usually do it. As you guys can see, I pat it in. I do not rub my foundation. I pat it in as I do with the primers. That's going to give you the nice melded natural foundation look that we all want now moving on to concealer i'm going to use my ColourPop no filter concealer this is one of my favorites and as you can see i have demonstrated what not to do and what to do try to do little triangles under your eyes this is going to give you the best coverage and the best look overall for anybody's face shape is to kind of do these triangles also you want to balance everything out if you're going to do it under the eyes try to bring light to the highest points of your face as well like your cupid's bow your nose the bridge of your nose your forehead anywhere that you have darkness like i have darkness around my mouth just because of hormones and stuff put the concealer there bring light to your eyes and again use a damp sponge this is not only going to meld the concealer and the foundation together but it's going to meld everything together into your skin again pat it in do not rub pat 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 repeat after me pat 
pat, 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 pat. I feel like the biggest mistake I see people do is rubbing their foundations in or their concealers. And that doesn't do really anything for you as it just creates a layer of makeup on top of your skin when what you really want to do is melt the makeup into your skin. Because at the end of the day, you don't want to look like you're wearing makeup is basically the illusion we all want to give, right? But now, of course, we have to set everything. Anything that is liquid, you have to set with a powder. Remember that. That's another really important tip. If you got a liquid, set it with a powder. So now I'm going to go ahead and bake one of my favorite things to do of life. I have to do this because I have oily skin. But if you guys don't, you guys can skip the baking thing and just set it with a powder. But I'm using my Sasha Buttercup setting powder. This is a yellow tinted powder. It's honestly one of the best powders on the market. I love it. It works so well for my skin tone. And it's just honestly so finely milled and so phenomenal and does an amazing job at controlling your oils. And as you can see, everywhere that I laid that concealer and everywhere that I want brightness on my skin, I go ahead and lay that powder. People ask me all the time why I laid on my jawline. And I just do this to help my contour out a little and give it some definition. I also always put concealer under my brows because I like to clean up my brows. So of course I'm going to use a little bit of that powder and set everything. And I usually let it sit on my skin for about 10 to 15 minutes while I'm doing something else. Whether it be eyeshadow or putting on my falsies, what have you. Then is removing it. What I like to do when I remove it is gently hold the brush. I do not use the brush hard. I do not press this powder in. This is the part where you can rub the product away. And my secret, which if you haven't noticed, because you can tell in all of my videos, is I gently grab the brush and I remove the powder in little small circles. This is what's going to give you that airbrushed flawless finish. This is what's going to keep you looking poreless. This is what's going to keep your skin looking smooth, is those really small, gentle circles. And then, of course, just wiping off the excess away. But again, do not press this powder in. This powder is meant to fall off. It was just meant to be a veil. Think of this powder as a veil, as an oil protecting veil. Then we're going to go ahead and with the excess that's on the cap and a big fluffy brush, we're going to go ahead and set everything, everything, everything. Put a light layer of powder all over your entire face. And this, my friends, is what's going to prevent anything from skipping because powder blends beautiful on top of powder, but powder on top of liquid does not blend beautiful. It sticks, it becomes tacky, and that's what gives you the skipping. And the skipping, I'm sure, is what we're all trying to avoid. Now we're going to go into contouring. To contour, I'm going to go ahead and grab this flat brush. This is from Morphe, and I'm going to go ahead and begin my contour. Now the contour begins basically where the top of your ear is diagonally down as you can see i'm holding my brush you can always use your brush as a marker and i'm going to lay the most amount of powder at the point that is furthest back from my face do not start from the beginning of your cheek back no you want the most product basically from where your hairline is and then you're going to just create a three you're going to brush the temples of course under the cheekbone and then the jawline as you will see me do shortly and as you can see, because we veiled our entire face with that powder, nothing is skipping. Everything is laying beautifully. Now we can go on to blending out this contour. Now I like to blend out the contour because I don't like my contour to look too harsh. So the way I blend out the dark contour is I use a lighter powder and a bronzer. And I go right on top of it, again, using a fluffier brush and a very, very, very light hand. And I just do the same exact thing. I go over that three that I had previously laid down with the contour with the bronzer. Notice that here I also move in small circles and that just blends everything together, makes everything look super natural, doesn't make it look like too much of a hard shadow. You just look like a nice bronze contour little biatch and that's what we want. Now for my absolute favorite part, blush. I love blush and people are so afraid of blush but I honestly can't get enough of it and honestly if you do it properly, blush is fun and it just changes everything. It really does change the game in your skin. So what I like to do is I like to drape. Now draping is nothing but a technique that just means bringing the product forward onto your skin. So I'm not just going to put my blush on the apples of my cheekbones, which everybody likes to do, which n does really nothing for you unless you're like a cabbage patch kid. I mean, it's a cute look, but it's really not flattering. And as you can see me doing, I also just pull it back to basically where my hairline is. That's all that draping is. It's just pulling the product back and layering it on top of and layering it on top of your bronzer which is why I love using an angled brush for this and a light hand I cannot ex emphasize that enough I was gonna say express that enough but either or emphasize that enough use a light hand when applying these products that's what's gonna give you that nice airbrushed finish like this one right here also the angled brush is perfect because it allows you to sweep the product on 
do not press this powder on this one you do not have to press again this one you just have to sweep as you will see me do with the highlight here i'm sweeping it on gently sweeping it on not applying it with a hard hand look how far my hand is from the handle of the brush it's pretty far back because i want to use a light hand that's what gives us that nice airbrushed light natural look and it really is all about finding the balance guys i know that sounds kind of funny and cliche because it is but just like the bronzer and the contour, we didn't all lay it in one place. As for the concealer, if you want to bring light to one spot, try to find places where you can balance it out and bring lights to the other spot, not just under the eyes. So that's what you're going to do with your highlight. And you're not just going to put highlight on your cheekbones. You're going to put it on the highest points of your face, the bridge of your nose, your cupid's bow, under your brows, a little bit on the forehead, your temples, and the inner corners of your eye. And then... With whatever powder is left over on that fluffy brush that we used to veil before, we are going to blend everything together. This is one of my favorite steps too. And after all that is said and done, we're going to grab our setting spray again and really use it for what it was intended for, which was set. And then your look is complete. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys learned a thing or two. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comment section down below. Please remember that I love you guys and I'll catch you in my next one. Bye.